episode two, take one. Kia ora and welcome back to the season one, episode two of this tutorial series on integrating CG elements into live action footage. Yeah, last time we brought our camera track into Blender and now we're gonna add some models to it. So let's jump into importing some models. So we'll go to file, append, and uh, navigate to my model folder. Here we have these uh, two models that I've downloaded. Let me just give some credit quickly. Uh, these two houses were made by Gorgeous, and they are indeed gorgeous. And um, I'm also going to be using a lantern model uh, by Starkerg. So we will barely see this, but it is in there. So credit where credit's due. Um, both of these were downloaded off BlendSwap, and I will link in the description. So let's jump in. Let's import our first house here and navigate to the correct collection and here we go it pops in just like that now i almost skipped this part of the tutorial but there's a few uh, useful things so bear with me i'm gonna add in a cube empty and scale this up now i'm going to select all the objects in my house making sure to uh, select something at the end and i'm going to hit f3 and convert mesh and this is going to uh, apply all of the the modifiers which is uh, pretty handy for us so shift clicking on the empty I'm gonna hit control P and object keep transform now we have an empty that can control our object and make our life pretty easy so let's roughly put this let's scale this up so it covers our 360 degree camera and just rotate it a little bit now I'm also going to zoom in here and show you that I've added this lantern preemptively. Um, so this is a lantern that was provided by Starker. And I'm just going to hide that for a second and delete these other things that are here. And I'm also going to delete this uh, glass because we're not going to see it. It's too far away. Uh, clicking on this bottom piece, I can hit Shift S, cursor to selected, and then Shift A, and I'm going to add in a uh, point light and move that up. And that's going to be the light source that you saw in the example video that's casting light on the floor. I'm also going to parent this to our empty. There we go. Let's bring in uh, one more house. So, append. Let's grab Medieval House 2. Let's drag that out of that collection. I'm going to select all of the objects. I'm going to control I to select everything else and hide it so that it's a little bit easier to work with. And now I can select all the objects again. Shift S to bring our cursor uh, back to the world origin. And let's add another empty and repeat that process. All right, this time though, before I um, convert this to mesh, I'm just going to go to objects, relations, and uh, make single user on the objects and data. And that's just going to uh, remove any kind of duplicate instances so that when I run this convert to mesh, it all works nicely. Then I can pair that to my empty object and Alt H to unhide everything. Now, with my empty selected, I can scale that up. And with a G Shift Z, I can move it uh, along all axes except the Z axis. And let's see how it's positioned. Just want to move this kind of here, somewhere where it will reflect in our bowl nicely. Speaking of our bowl, uh, we need to model that into our scene so that it can catch our reflections of the house here. Before we do that, in order to make it a little bit easier for us, what I'm going to do is I'm going to orient our scene so that it's facing our y and x axis. Um, it'll just make it a little bit easier for us. So to do that, I'm going to make sure my cursor is in the center. I'm going to go Shift A, and I'm going to add in a new empty. Let's make it, I don't know, a sphere. Let's scale that up. 
And now I can select everything by hitting A. Then I'm going to make sure that I come to my camera and deselect the camera. So I'll leave the, the transform empty there. Select my world sphere last, control P and select object, keep transform. And now if I rotate this on the Z axis so that everything is facing the Y, like so, and go to my camera view, it's all still tracked, but you can see our Y axis goes off into the distance and I can you know, rotate this any way. You'll see nothing changes except the grid, which is perfect. Okay. So now that we've done that, let's just make sure this is in our uh, scene collection here and let's rename it to world empty. Now we can create our ball. So we'll click on our empty here that we uh, brought into the scene for this very purpose. We're going to move our cursor to selected. We're going to add in a UV sphere because it closely resembles the shape of our ball. So let's scale that up and we can go to the top view. And if we look at where we positioned our solid here, just on the front edge of this ball, we can match that up in Blender. So let's uh, press G and Y and slide that back on the Y axis so that that is in the correct position. Going back to our camera view now, we can go into wireframe and start to position this uh, more specifically. So let's move it down. Let's move it on the X axis a bit and scale it up. All right. And you want to get this as close as possible. Um, favoring the, the side that we're going to be seeing, which is this side. So I'm just going to select that top vertice and hit control plus to expand my selection and scale Z to zero and bring that down for the flat top. And then it's kind of just <clears throat> scaling these uh, up until we kind of have the right shape here. And I'm going to go to my front view and delete these vertices. Okay. And now we have our ball tracked into the scene. So let's go back to our solid view and we'll shade this smooth. Let's go. All right. Um, for the last part of this, particular tutorial, we're just going to add some materials to this. So let's go to our shading. Let's also make sure that uh, we set this to cycles. GPU, experimental, because why not? Adaptive sampling. Let's give this a save. And we need to set up our HDRI. So in our world settings, let's import the HDRI we created environment texture. More accurately, I created it, but you are free to use it. And let's add a mapping node to this by pressing Control T with uh, Node Wrangler enabled, and we'll import our HDR. Let's just rotate this around on the Z axis to get it roughly in the correct position here. And there we go. All that's left to do is uh, give this a material. Let's uh, add a new material to it and call it bowl. And we'll uh, make this metallic. And we will decrease the roughness just so that we can see what that looks like. Also bring down this color slightly. I'm going to go back to my world. I'm going to add, these are looking a little dark, so I'm going to add a gamma node. Bring that down to 0.7 or something, just to brighten it up a little bit. 
going back to our object here, I'm just going to make sure that under our uh, render properties, under film, I'm going to enable transparent so that we can see our background while we're working. And just get this color right so it looks like it's kind of matching uh, the background that we shot here. And it's not actually that shiny, our ball, so let's boost up the roughness again. And let's make it anisotropic, anis, anisotropic, anisotropic. And we'll give it a rotation of 180 because it's a completely arbitrary number that I chose since I don't know what that really does. Let's give that a save. And let's also add a material to our floor here. It's going to be a nice, simple material. And I've included a couple of things here. Um, so we've got a kitchen wood diffusion, which we'll plug in. And we've got a kitchen wood roughness, which we'll plug in. And this looks kind of similar to the wood in our scene. Clicking on this node, I can hit Control T to bring out our mapping node. And Alt, right click, drag, we're connected to this node as well. Let's just rotate this on the z-axis by 90 degrees to match the grain of our floor. And we'll scale this up to 2. Okay, we're almost at the end of this part of the tutorial series. The last thing we're going to do is add the light that you saw in the example earlier. So we made our point light earlier. I'm just going to select it. And uh, let's go to our light properties. And we'll set this to quite a high number since our scene is quite bright. Let's go 8,000. And um, we will give it a nice warm color. something like that and that is it for this part of the tutorial thank you for sticking this far if you have and we will jump into the next one where we'll talk about render passes how to isolate our reflections and um how to set up our export settings so that we can bring that into after effects later so thank you for watching and see you in the next part